Hello and welcome to the channel and welcome to another Lost Reaction. This is Season 4, Episode 6 and it's called The Other Woman. And I don't know what that means. Uh, or what it's referring to. I'll think about that in a sec. The last episode, hmm. Last episode was a strange one. I'm not entirely sure what to make of it. At a surface level it seems fairly obvious but... Once you start analysing it, there's a lot more going on there than I first thought. And it introduces, well, I say it introduces a new element to the series. Time travel. Uh, when writers deal with time travel, they have to be very, very careful. And in a series like this, they have to be doubly careful to be consistent Let's hope they manage it if this is going to be a regular theme. Which it does seem to be because Miles mentioned it. He mentioned that your perception of how long your friends have been gone may not be how long your friends have been gone. That's what he said. And yes, it. Uh, what was it? A 20 minute flight took, what, eight hours? Most of the night. But it felt like sort of 20 minutes for the people on board odd now it's true it's true I could watch these episodes and not overanalyze them not go into details just watch each episode for what it is move on to the next I could do that but where would the fun be in that this is a series that begs to be analyzed it begs to be watched and re-watched so you notice more and more things the more knowledge you have so that's what I've done and since the uh, element of time travel had been introduced and I've got a few problems with the timeline I thought I'd go back and check a few details I didn't actually watch any full episodes I must admit I went back and watched particular scenes for many many episodes the first one was the orientation video from orientation the very very first one we saw the swan uh, the thing that I wanted to check was when was it made the end screen at the end said 1980 so the incident that Marvin Candle is referring to can't be the incident that we saw in Ben's flashback you know the gassing of all the the Dharma people because my my sort of lowest date for that was sort of mid 80s and some in the comments suggested that it could possibly be mid 90s that that incident occurred. Now, when it comes to comments like that, I never know whether they're the person is uh, speaking from advanced knowledge that I don't yet have, or whether it's an unanswered question, and that is purely their opinion. So I can't take too much notice of that. But even anywhere between those dates, eighty-four to ninety-three, so can't be the same incident so I wonder what the incident that Marvin Candle is referring to is also I went back and checked um, question mark the orientation video for the pearl now my patrons will know that that particular episode my copy of it was absolutely messed up totally glitched so I had to go on YouTube to get the unglitched version of that video. And that is also marked as being made in 1980. And also Marvin Candle calls himself Mark Whitman. Maybe a reference to Walt Whitman. Couldn't quite hear it, but it was definitely a different name. So yeah, it seems that either Dharma didn't arrive on the island until the late 70s, or some of the 
facilities were set up at different times. And there's also an incident that we don't know what it is yet. That happened before Ben. Not in Portland. I went back for that one. Because I wanted to see exactly how Juliet's um, recruitment exactly the words that were said um, and, he, and she means Richard and Ethan both off the island both three years ago so yeah I don't know what that means anyway um, it seems that Ben, Richard and Ethan were moving freely between the island and the real world with no ill effects, no time dilation problems or anything like that. That's, But it wasn't working for Dharma. Or at least they weren't under the guise of Dharma. They were under the guise of a company called Metalos. 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 I didn't notice that the first time round. But Mitalos is so an obvious anagram of lost time. Or maybe it's an anagram of time lost. Are the two the same thing? Can they can they can they mean different things? Either way, uh, I didn't notice that one. Also, we had Cole's uh, brainwashing, and the things that were said in. Well, not the said, but you know the. The, the text that was flashing up during Carl's brainwashing now kind of takes on a new context. We are the causes of our own suffering. And didn't we kind of see that with Desi's flash forwards and flashbacks? Um, think about your life. Everything changes. I'm sure we can take that into a different realm, those those phrases into, into this lost time thing. Think about your life because you're going to be revisiting your life. So you have to keep the... I don't know, I don't know. I don't know, I'm sure it means something. What else did I write down? I, I went... Okay, flashes before your eyes. Des, two years into his relationship with Penny. And that was a very weird flashback, wasn't it? Because with most people's flashback, it looks like you're an observer watching the actual events taking place. But with Desi's flashback, or this, this particular flashback in Flashes Before Your Eyes, it was done slightly differently, wasn't it? Because, well, first of all, when he first goes back, he feels like he's... Des of the future's consciousness in his old body. He's sort of confused and it takes him, you know, he can remember things that haven't happened yet technically, so it's, it's still his future consciousness. But when he goes to the jeweler's store and the jeweler tells him that no, he's not supposed to do this, he seems confused. Like he doesn't know what she's talking about. Like it's his past consciousness still in there so you know a switch occurred he started becoming his past self as it were and surely that couldn't have happened the first time round because that wouldn't have made any sense would it the jeweler suddenly turning around to him and saying no you're not supposed to do this did he leave penny and go on a boat race and join the army because the old lady told him he was going to do that. And also, when it comes to uh, Desmond and in the last episode, did he get kicked out of the army or get, get kicked off of basic training, it seems, because he went AWOL to go and see Daniel Faraday in Oxford? How does that work? How, how is it that his future self can alter his past timeline? And we know he did because he got Penny's phone number in the past. 
and then phoned her in the present using the number and she remembered it and Daniel remembers meeting Desmond in the past so he actually affect he's at yeah this is this is why I'm so confused and why I haven't been able to get to grips with the last episode it seems that his future self is interfering with his own timeline but He's not altering his timeline, he's completing it. Like he always, he was always destined to go back, as it were, or his consciousness to go back and set certain things in motion. So De Desmond's timeline is a, like a loop. It's, it's so confusing. They've really set up something weird going on here and I, even for someone experienced in time travel films and time travel TV shows I'm not entirely sure how this all fits together it's like it's like a jigsaw really Lost as a whole is like a jigsaw where you're only handed one piece at a time and you're not told what the eventual picture is supposed to be and sometimes the writers will give you a piece that doesn't even belong in that jigsaw but they don't tell you that so you have to try and work that one out for yourself it is really really confusing <laughs> okay then um there was a few other things that i went back uh they didn't actually reveal that much but it's worth mentioning because they might have some relevance somewhere down the way um in part avion christian says there is hope and there is guilt and I know the difference referring to him trying to persuade Claire to turn off her mother's machine and let her mother die Jack in court I didn't notice it at first but he actually tells Anna Lucia's story eight survivors landed in the water it wasn't wasn't that Anna's story and you know she kept us alive and everything that was Anna who, who helped the towel section stay alive why is Jack recounting the towel section story also <laughs> Anna Lucia something I, 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 it occurred to me one of those silly little parallels that I hadn't even thought about Anna Lucia had a thing with Sawyer. She screwed him to get a gun. With the island's propensity for high sperm count, it's possible that Anna could have fallen pregnant from that encounter. And then she was shot in the stomach by Michael, which is exactly what happened to her in our world, in, in the past. I mean, she was shot when she was pregnant. So history repeating itself there. Just thought I'd mention that. I still haven't worked out why Jack wouldn't wouldn't want to see Alan, and why that would be a stipulation for Kate to date him, and also that Kate is receptive to dating Jack. So, where's Sawyer? Uh, is it because Jack knows that Aaron is doomed? That Aaron's going to die? And he doesn't want to get attached? Black Rock Journal. I knew there was one last thing. We saw the journal of the first mate of the Black Rock uh, auctioned auctioned by the, the owner of Ohanzo or Tav Ohanzo I couldn't quite make out the name but it's the surname that's important Hanzo same family that set up Dharma in the first place the um, munitions magnet that came up with the whole thing um, either the same person or a relation and it was bought by King George 
I've forgotten his name. Um, Charles. It was bought by Charles Widmore. So, what did we learn there? They gave a little bit of a history. Definitely not a slave ship. It was going in the wrong direction. It was in, in totally the wrong part of the world to be a slave ship. I always knew it wasn't a slave ship. For a start, the manacles are way too spaced. They crammed slaves in a slave ship. They crammed them in. Uh, that was more like uh, a ship that had had a mutiny and had to take prisoners. Possibly. But it was a, a 1845 a tea clipper, or a, a trading ship, sorry, a trading ship going to Thailand. So that explains what it was doing in that part of the world. But the, the, the thing that the auctioneer said was that the contents of the journal were known only to the owner. And now, since 1996, to Charles. So something, there's something in that journal that made Hanso set up Dharma and go to that island. So, what is it? Because also, whatever it is, Charles discovered it because he's been searching for the island. I'm pretty sure that the boat, the rescue boat that we're now encountering is from Charles. That's how they knew Penny's name. That's how there was a communications device that Penny can get through to because it's Charles okay then I suppose I should get on with the next episode the other woman the other woman is this going to be about the love quadrangle now between Juliet and Jack and Jack and Kate and Kate and Sawyer and Jack and Sawyer. Um, the other woman, the other one. Who, who? It's Christian, isn't it? It's Christian and it's about his... With Jack's mum and with Claire's mum. Maybe. Because we need some answers about Christian because Christian is one of the biggest mysteries around. Is there a reason? For, no. Let's not get into this. Right, okay then. The other woman. Let's start. I like your moustache, Tom. Welcome to your humble abode. This is for me? You're here to help us with some very important research, Juliet. We pulled out all the stops. <laughs> two bedrooms, two baths, washer, dryer, fresh linens, a well-stocked fridge. Oh, and I know you love the opera. You have all the classics on CD. You shouldn't have gone to all the trouble. I'm only going to be here for six months. No, you're right, not. Of course, but we want you to feel at home. <laughs> you're going nowhere. How's that? I um, I, I work over at the power station. I was pressed up against a transformer. Take a seat. Let me take a look at it. Anyone to talk to? Any friends here? Maybe Harper. Harper hates me. <laughs> I talk because we have to. I get the feeling that she's a mean and spiteful person. You're probably she's my wife. Oh. Awkward. She's your wife. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, don't worry I about it, really. It's okay. Okay. I know this place can wear on you, but if you need to talk, I'm around. Good to know. Oh, um, and they talk, don't they? And other things. Life. What I said about her, I won't tell anyone that you lied about how you hurt your arm. <laughs> I know a chemical burn when I see one. Yeah, I'm sure his wife knows the lie. Look at me. 
I know you can do this. Oh. Oh, 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 it's, it's okay. It's okay, it's okay. So they have Nile. Yeah, but he's fine. Yeah, but they're treating him fine. Thought they're not treating him fine. He's got a hand grenade in his mouth. What are you guys doing out here? Jack was trying to communicate with Saeed and Desmond on the freighter, but... The sat phone ran out of juice. It's totally dead. There's no way we can call the boat. Um, so we volunteered to get the said batteries out of the packs that we threw out of the chopper. Remember Charlotte's got a gun, so don't turn your back on her. Batteries, huh? What's this? <sighs> See that coming a mile off. What? Dear oh dear, Kate. So, Juliet, what do you think of Ben? Been really good to me. Of course he has. He looked just like her. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And I see you and my husband become friendly. Um. What's well, that's not therapy. Yeah. He's great. When did you start sleeping with him? What? Look, Juliet. I'm not an idiot. So just tell me. When did it start? About a week ago. Okay. I'm not doing this. We're done. No. Now, if you continue to have a relationship with Goodwin, there will be consequences. Is that a threat? I don't want him to get hurt. I would never hurt him. Look, at, I am not talking about you. I am talking about, about ben. ben. So has a revolution begun yet? Or? Well, you're the leader now. I know it's a tough position. You have to deal with all those people constantly second-guessing your decisions. Your people are going to be so angry when they realize you still don't have a plan. Ben is so good at disrupting I John's... I assume you have a plan. I always have a plan. Give me some semblance of freedom. Let me sleep in a bed and eat with utensils. And I give you my word, I'll tell you everything you want to know about Joe, the See, the there's the problem. I don't trust your word. All right, then. I guess I'll have to show you. Okay. What's he going to show John? Ben wouldn't like it. That's what this is about. You're worried about Ben. Why? Because he has a crush on you? Oh, that's why. No. Come on, everyone knows. He follows you around like a puppy. <laughs> I didn't know that. And you don't think that's a problem? I just get the feeling that he would be upset. What's Ben gonna do? It's not up to Ben. Oh, is that what Ben's going to do? It's behind that picture. A safe. Containing 3.2 million. Oh. A videotape. Is that an orientation video? I taped over the game. <laughs> there he is. This is Charles Widmore. This is the man whose boat is parked offshore. Yes! Got him right. Only about three episodes the behind everyone else. Trying to find the island. Charles Whitmore wants to exploit this island and he'll do everything in his power to possess it. So it would seem. Everything I know about Charles Whitmore is in this file. Some of it's vague, some of it's guesswork, some of it's concrete. But this is everything, and now it's all yours. 
it doesn't that just sum up this show <laughs> some of it's concrete some of it's guesswork <laughs> they're still working oh that's why is Daniel trying to do that? Juliet, what are you doing here? One minute to contamination. Huh, he's trying to stop it. Release the gas, you'll die with the rest of us. No, no, no. I'm not trying to release it. I'm trying to, trying to render it inert, Juliet. I just want to make it safe. It's already been released. Well. I don't want Charlotte to be the baddie. Whatever he's doing, tell him to stop. We're trying to disable it before he can use it against us. Ben. Julia, look me in the eye and tell me you are certain that Benjamin Linus wouldn't use this gas to kill everyone on this island. We know he's used it before. If you want to stop us, you're going to have to shoot us both. Ten, seven, Whoa, nick of time. That was a close one. <laughs> I'm sorry, Julia. Sorry about what? You couldn't have just told her? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh Why well, you just told her? No, it was, it was only for her to see it. That was a bit of a... You knew this would happen. Yes. He did. You sent him out here because you knew this would happen. Yes. You wanted this. You wanted him to die. Why? Why? Isn't it obvious? After everything I did to get you here, after everything I've done to keep you here, how can you possibly not understand? You're mine. Okay, creepy maximum eleven. Take as much time as you need. Now I think I'll take eternity. Thank you very much. What a what a uh, I, I, there's no words to describe whatever he is. No wonder she turned on him eventually. Uh oh. What the hell are you doing? You guys at dinner. <laughs> oh dear, John Locke's chosen the. Uh, I, mm. Okay, so we have confirmation that that is Charles Widmore's boat. But the rest of it, well, <clears throat> I don't know. Get to see how Juliet and Goodwin got together. It wasn't really interesting in that. We found, well, we find out exactly what sort of be person Ben is, but we already knew what sort of person Ben is. Um, all we've done is escalated that a little bit, made him a little bit worse than we th all thought. Very possessive. And really didn't care about getting Goodwin killed to serve what he thought was his own purpose. I don't know why he doesn't think that Juliet has some, some kind of free will over this. I don't know. Um, which also shows what sort of a man he is. <clears throat> Used to get in his own way. Not much else, really. Not much else. Uh, new new girl, Harper. I'm not, not, we've not seen her before, I'm sure. But I quite agree with Juliet's assessment of her, actually. She did seem spiteful and cruel. Okay then. Maybe a few more pieces to the jigsaw. I don't know. I suppose. It's, it's, it's one of those things I suppose. You know. Um, keep going back over episodes. Because things you didn't realise were important. Actually turn out to be important. And I'm sure I'll be going back to this episode. To check some finer details at some point but right now it didn't seem like a, a very informative episode particularly in in the ongoing plots 
now Ben is walking around freely, but John doesn't. John would be foolish to trust him. But Ben knows how to twist John round his little finger, doesn't he? Now, I don't know whose side I'm on anymore. <laughs> I think I'm on Desmond's side. Right, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time, and I'll unpack this a little bit more next time. Until then, thank you very much for watching, and see you later. Bye-bye.